everyone and welcome to prompt number 82. Rhymes with poop, that's all I got. Okay, let's see what the prompts are. We've got tribal pattern and suit of armor. Okay, well, here goes nothing. <laughs> So the reason why I groaned when I read Tribal Pattern is because my immediate thought was those tribal tattoos, those really, like people would get Pikachu as a tribal tattoo or various pop culture things in this tribal pattern style. Just not good looking tribal tattoos that were really popular I feel like a while ago. No offense obviously if you like them, but personally. Anyways, so that was my immediate thought when I read tribal pattern, but then when I started sketching I noticed it said tribal pattern and not tattoo. But again, when I think tribal pattern, I think it's probably someone's culture. So I was so paranoid about offending someone by appropriating this culture. So even though I did research on what certain patterns mean, even though in the initial sketching I did just want to get something down, so it is kind of nonsense. But as I was constructing the actual drawing sketch, I looked up what tribal patterns meant what, but in the end I just felt like... I feel like I have to tiptoe around these things, so in the end I kind of just made up my own tribal sort of thing and made it a very small part of the illustration. It probably doesn't help that my original idea in my sketches were someone like a knight in a suit of armor was being cursed or something and these patterns were coming out of them. One of the reasons why I kind of ditched that idea. I didn't want to offend anybody, but I'm trying to be creative, so in the end I went with something a little more subtle. So we have a person in a suit of armor who has gotten lost or they ran away or they are just separated. They are alone, they are lost, they are scared, and they've stumbled across this mushroom forest, which is... The mushroom forest was in my original sketch, I knew that, but I want to make up my own fantasy world. I don't want to do something that already exists. So I created this mushroom forest and I wanted to think of creatures that might live in this forest and this knight or whatever, whoever wears a suit of armor, he is injured, he has stumbled across this mushroom forest in hopes of resting, but as he fixes up the wound on his knee and he has taken the armor off and he's trying to take a rest, he notices that little creatures are starting to watch him and they are appearing around in the mushroom forest. So as soon as he thinks he can rest and kind of catch his breath and get back to normal, he notices that he's in unfamiliar territory and these little creatures that live here he doesn't know if they are good or bad, obviously. If you see a new creature, especially when it's completely black with glowing white eyes and so mysterious, you just don't know if you are safe or not. So I wanted to make sure that he looked really worried but stressed on his face and he's reaching for his sword and he's all bloodied up, which you will see later. But something I did want to focus on with this illustration was color. I really wanted to make sure I was creating an environment and I wanted to make sure that the color played a huge part of it. And although I do fail, as I do, I, I realize that I do need to practice a lot with my colors and just creating an environment using my colors because colors can be a really good way to help you create an environment. Originally, I did want to put a very light purple wash over the entirety of the illustration, but after I had done it with just the mushrooms, I got really concerned because I knew once I put a sort of light yellowy brown over it, it was going to muddy it up a bit, and so I stopped there on the mushrooms because I didn't want to make everything else in this illustration muddy and gross. So although I wanted to make everything this sort of purpley darkness because this is taking place at night, I didn't want to destroy the illustration. This illustration is following a nice little burnout I'm experiencing as I try to prepare these videos in advance for my three week trip in Japan. So with how hard I am rushing and pushing myself to create good content in a short amount of time, I super burnt out. So this illustration took me a week to sit on until I finally pushed myself to work on it and create something I liked. So once I had inked it and I was very happy with it, I was so disappointed that I was then destroying it with color because I had struggled so much with this illustration in the burnout and then I turn around and destroy it with the color. Overall, I don't think the color is so, so bad. I do quite like it. It is very dark. I just do think it's a little muddied and just a little too dull. 
I mean, it is night, so it's going to be dull. And something I did struggle with was that I really wanted to make the mushrooms red, give them a light yellow sort of trunk area, and make the grass a bright green. I wanted to give it that classic mushroomy fantasy look, but I also wanted to create a mood where this guy was feeling scared and it was dark and it was night and he was lonely. So I thought I would go towards the purple area a little bit. Do I regret it? No. But I do have to wonder what it would look like if I did use some bright reds and greens. I told myself to scan this line art and then plug in some colors in Photoshop, but did I do it? No, I always regret when I don't set up my colors and just see what works before jumping in there. Oh well, overall, I'm pretty dang happy with this illustration. So even though there's a few things that I do need to work on, it's okay. originally drawing these little cat creatures, I wanted to make them, I guess, sort of slug-like because as I thought, after I colored them in, they were really starting to remind me of little Totoros, which is not what I wanted to do. I just wanted them to be sort of a generic cat creature. So giving them a slug-like body would have made it silly and also more of a weird forest creature. But in the end, I decided to just have all their little heads poking out and not really show the end of any of them. There is one to the right of the guy who is sort of phasing through the mushroom. So I thought that was kind of interesting that they might be spirits. Maybe they're not actually there. Maybe he's just thinking they are there and they're not actually there. He's probably lost a lot of blood in battle, so maybe he's just imagining all of this. Or maybe he ate the mushrooms, I don't know. So I definitely wanted to give him some blood splatters because those are so much fun and they add just a little bit of detail. Oh, there was something else. He's wearing his lucky pair of socks because he did remove the armor in his right leg so that he could attend the wound on his knee. I thought it would be really silly to give him cute striped socks so that maybe he wore his lucky socks today so that the, the battle would go well and he would go home unscathed, but... Here we are in a forest with mythical creatures and he's, he's injured. So giving him a red and white striped sock would look good on the grass, but also give me an excuse to use more red for the blood on the rest of him. So I really quite like the blood splatters, especially because, I mean, he was, he was in a battle. So obviously he's going to have some blood and dirt on him. Anyways, so I completely forgot to add the tribal pattern at the end, which I knew I was going to do. I didn't ink them because I did want to give them more of a soft look and not so much of a harsh black ink on them. So after I finished coloring it, I was like, yep, I'm done. And then I noticed that the mushroom didn't have the tribal patterns. And I was just like, whoa, 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 gotta add those tribal patterns. So like I said, I sort of just made up my own patterns and I put them on the stalks of the mushrooms just so it looked like the little cats had created those patterns and the guy's turning around because he notices these weird patterns and he sees cats. So pretty cute illustration. I do think it got a little muddy, but other than that, I'm quite happy with it. And I do like a good backstory. All right guys, thank you so much for watching and I will see you at the end card. It was so hard choosing which entries to include for the prompts Pirate and Unicorn. There were so many backstories, there were so many goofy illustrations. I had a lot of fun with these, but we do have two featured artists. The first one is Cocklet Orange, who had this really cute illustration just full of details. There is so much going on. There's a kid playing as a pirate, there are unicorns, there are toys everywhere. Just so many little details. I loved looking at this piece. And we have Minty's illustration who has this wonderfully and beautiful detailed illustration of a pirate riding a unicorn. But the character designs on this one is what really got me. They are so beautiful and just full of backstory. I cannot imagine what their story is together. All right guys, thank you so much for joining in and I will see you in the next video.
But before I leave, I do want to make a quick announcement. Next week's prompt number 83 is the last prompt you can join in on for the end card for a whole month. I'm going to be in Japan for a few weeks, so I'm going to have to pre-make these videos so I can't include your prompts. So prompts 84, 85, 86, and 87, I cannot include them on the end card. Feel free to join in anyways, but until then, a slight break. Okay, bye.